December 16, 1863, the Federal Army will be robbed of one of the finest cavalry officers in the Union service. John Buford was born March 4, 1826, in the slave state of Kentucky. At age 10, his father moved to Rock Island, Illinois, a northern state. John Buford desired a military career. He was able to get an appointment to the United States Military Academy from the state of Illinois in 1844. While he was at this school, he's going to befriend a lot of men who will be both his foes and his colleagues during the Civil War. The class of 1846 will have Thomas J. Jackson, will have George Pickett, and George McClellan. The class of 1847 will have Henry Heath and A.P. Hill, both Confederate generals that Buford faces at the Battle of Gettysburg. He graduates on July 1st, 1848, and he's posted immediately to Jefferson Barracks, Missouri. Between 1854 and 1861, John Buford will do service at a wide range of military posts. And at the outbreak of the American Civil War, he'll be with his friend, General John Gibbon. And the two of them will be serving at Fort Crittenden in the Utah Territory when the firing of Fort Sumter occurs on April 12, 1861. Both of these men had Southern ties. And the question becomes, are they gonna go with the Union? Or are they gonna go with the new Confederacy? This was a question that weighed heavy on John Buford's mind. The governor of Kentucky wrote him while I was at Fort Crittenden and John Buford answered, I told him I was a captain in the United States Army and I intend to remain one. John Buford will be assigned a cavalry position with General Pope's army. He'll fight at Second Bull Run He'll also be involved as the Chief of Cavalry at both the Battle of Antietam and the Battle of Fredericksburg in December of 1862. In the summer of 1863, he will be promoted to Brigadier General and he'll be given a command of a brigade and then a division in the Army of the Potomac. At 11 a.m. on June 30th, 1863, John Buford's 2,700 men arrive in Gettysburg. His troops will fan out on the western edge of town looking for the Confederates. On July 1st, 1863, the fighting will start at about 7.30, and General Buford himself, in the early morning, will be up here in the cupola of the Lutheran Theological Seminary. John Reynolds, the head of the Federal Infantry, arrives and shouts up, What's the matter, John? And Buford, in famous words, tells him, The devil's to pay. Buford will hold on, and Reynolds will bring up the infantry on July 1st. And Buford has been able to allow the Union Army to buy the necessary time they need and while the Union Army is tactically defeated on July 1, a large part because of Buford's command, the Confederates will have a strategic defeat. They just don't know it yet because the Union Army is able to move back to some higher ground south of Gettysburg. In the fall of 1863, because of exposure and many factors, General Buford will be sick. And so on his deathbed, December 16, 1863, General Buford will be promoted to Major General of the Volunteers. When he's told this, his words were, quote, I wish now I could have lived. I don't think we could have a more fitting epitaph for John Buford than what's said by his friend, General John Gibbon. He was the best cavalryman I ever saw. <laughs>